guys, this is a long plane review for New York Warriors on the Amstrad CPC, released by Virgin Games in 1990. And as you can see from the box art here, it was heavily influenced by the movies Escape from New York and The Warriors, specifically the baseball furies on the cover there. Now, what is very interesting about this game before we get to the Amstrad version is that originally this was technically an arcade coin op game. It was produced for Massatronic's failed foray into the coin-op business with their Arcadia system, which is basically a Commodore Amiga inside an arcade cab that allows several arcade boards of games to be installed, clearly influenced by Nintendo's PlayChoice 10 arcade system. Now, from what little is known of the Arcadia system, some cabinets were produced by a company called Electrocoin in the UK, and then they put it in some US arcades, we believe, for testing, but it didn't progress much further than that. It is rumoured that it nearly caused Mastertronic to go bust and Virgin stepped in by nearly half the company. Which is why you find a lot of the Arcadia destined games being released by both Mastertronic on their budget label, such as Ninja, and Virgin in the case of New York Warriors. So we're going to now quickly take a look at the Arcadia original before we move on to the Amstrad version and long play. Um, its original title was Delta Command, but the game is identical to the New York Warriors you would play on the Amiga, apart from the screen you get when you enter a coin. As you can see here, it even says produced with the Commodore Amiga microcomputer mm, and the Arcadia logo there. Now this has been played in MAME, believe it or not, the arcade emulator, and a shout out to David Hayes Hayward for his input here. David is a good friend of this channel, but he's also been responsible for dumping many an arcade board, some of which you've likely played in MAME before. And pay attention here, guys, to the uh, pre-level um, cutscene and how this top-down run-and-gun shoot-em-up plays with it scrolling and all the additional little things you will see, like the animated bushes blowing in the, in the wind. We'll see how much of that is converted to the Amstrad. Um... So, as David has, has been telling me, finding these Arcadia balls to dump is a big task. They're extremely rare and they never made it into full production. However, quite a few of the Arcadia dumps came from boards found in an old warehouse, which was apparently connected to Electrocoin, which makes sense. But there are problems here. As you can see, the game runs too fast, which is an emulation issue. But you should get an, a good idea of how the Amiga version plays and how it looks, which is important when we see the Amstrad version next of how much it managed to cram in. And obviously the Arcadia system wasn't received well. Obviously Mastertronic with their huge success of the budget range tried to emulate this to an extent with a cheap budget range of coin-up cabs for arcade operators. I'm assuming though that they couldn't get the price down cheap enough, nor were the games impressive enough to woo anyone. Just looking at Delta Command here, it's already well below standard arcade quality budget range or not. Here's the game over screen. Hunters would expect more in the arcades, not something that they could get at home. But there you go, that was the original New York Warriors under its original name of Delta Command running via emulation of an Amiga in an arcade cabinet. And now finally, on to the Amstrad version. So the conversion of New York Warriors was handled by a guy called R. Fred Williams and he's been very kindly speaking to me via email about the making of the game and especially about one major issue which we will encounter about halfway through the game. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. But for now, here's the disc and 128k version of New York Warriors. And oof, an animated <laughs> loading screen. Very nice. That was on the Amiga and Arcade original, guys, if you were paying attention to the start of the video. Very nice. <laughs> so that's already in the game, in the conversion. That's very, very good. Nice little touch there. Ooh, music. Very nice. Virgin Mastertronic presents... New York Warriors, there we go, conversion by Big Red Software, mm. graphics by The Picture Element, and Amstrad coding by R. Fred W, aka R. Fred Williams. So yeah, I'll be talking a bit about Fred in a little bit, and uh, we'll be kicking the game off very, very shortly. 
And uh, this is a game I've been meaning to do for years. Um, I actually own the game and I actually quite enjoy this. Um, there's not many run and gun sort of games on the Amstrad of decent quality. So if you like Ikari Warriors, um, Commando, and you, you feel like you want to play something similar to that, well, probably New York Warriors is your next game to look at. And I think we'll kick things off here and we'll see if it has the um, cutscenes between the levels. Nice fading out there and fading in. Yes, it does. Gang, jetpackers, too cool to walk, weapons, bombs. Level one, mission profile, keep moving and watch out for the jetpack gang. There we go. And they've got the New York City uh, skyline and outline there, very much like what you saw in uh, the film Escape from New York. Mm. Of course, yeah, we've got New York Warriors, Escape from New York and the Warriors movies. Combined, combined their titles together to give the game its new name of New York Warriors. If that's not obvious enough already for you. <laughs> now we have a very, very short opening level just to get you accustomed. Oh, look! An animated helicopter dropping us off. Very nice. Got sound effects and music. It's the same tune we heard on the title screen. But the graphics are really colorful. It scrolls pretty decently. We've got animated um, trees blowing in the wind there. Very nice, and it looks really close to the Amiga original, but obviously kind of condensed for the Amstrad. Quite a small plane area though, but I can forget that. Uh-oh, there's the jetpack gang. So when they appear, you want to just like move off to the side of the screen as quickly as possible. There you go, and you can avoid them. They can't be shot or killed. But literally, guys, this is the end of the first level. And trust me, uh, not all the levels be as quick to complete as this one. And we get the, another cutscene here. Gang, the Ramboids, very sly, hint, hint, weapons AK-47. Secure the bridge, disable pair of tanks guarding the city entrance. <laughs> so not only we've got the New York Warriors, uh, sorry, <laughs> Escape from New York and the Warriors, but we've got Rambo thrown in here now. And lots of references to 80s pop culture and films and stuff. Brilliant. <laughs> and no one sued anyone. And this level is very reminiscent of the end of Escape from New York, where um, Kurt Russell, or Snake Pliskin, has to uh, get over the uh, bridge. Oh look, there's an animated rat there. And there's weapon pickups as well. And we've got the triple shot, which is probably the best weapon in the game. Now the enemy AI is not uh, particularly brilliant. It's pretty much non-existent really. Um, they just stand still and shoot a continuous volley of bullets. So often the best way to deal with them is just stay quite far down the screen and take pot shots at them. Look, they're not even moving. Look at animated water there as well. And we've got the mad, mad guy behind the sandbags. That was in the Amiga original. Again, not too, not too bright. He just kind of stays still there. Rooted to his spot, but wigg waggling away with his gun. Oof. Nice explosion effects, really nicely done. Got more animated rats there, animated fire, animated water. Wow, like Fred has really gone all out here. I, I'm actually genuinely impressed. I really am. I, I love games that have all these extra little touches done to them. This could have been a very simple bog standard kind of shoot them up with, you know, you know what I mean, guys. But I just, I, I just really appreciate when programmers and coders go to the extra mile. Oh, there's a new enemy now. Sort of like a Rastafarian guy that does actually move around a bit more than compared to the other guys we've come across. Oh. 
you can just move back uh, off the screen, or you can just uh, just like rush in. <laughs> Often it pays to take things very cautiously in this game if you want to get through it. It does get very tough, especially on the next level. And there we go. Um. So I didn't actually talk about the plot of the game. Um. Those sensitive about 9-11 may want to switch off the, the, the this video now, but basically the plot of the game is um, there are terrorists and they have uh, basically overtaken New York itself with a drug, turning people into a frenzy. You notice there was guys on park benches shooting us. They are civilians, but they've turned mad from this drug. and. Um, and now these terrorists are planning to build, uh, blow up the World Trade, Cent World Trade Center. <laughs> oh dear. Obviously this was many, many, many years before 9-11. So I don't think anyone's going to get a bit sensitive and upset about that. Anywho, um, so you're off to basically um, infiltrate the World Trade Center. But obviously you've got to get through all of New York to get there. So we'll go over bridges and through subways, through parks and stuff until eventually we get to the World Trade Center. And that's and that's where we have to disable a nuclear bomb. Fail and the nuclear bomb goes off. Quite why terrorists want to set off a nuclear bomb while they're still in the city, I don't know. But that's video game logic for you. Hmm. Um, so, um... You can see pretty much what's going on here. So I'm going to tell you um, a bit about um, the making of the game, courtesy of Fred R. Williams, who very kindly talked to me over email. So Fred tells me that this was his first ever game and coding job, and what a great job he's done here. Very, very impressive for a uh, first game. And Fred himself admits that he was pretty determined to get as much of the Amiga version into the Amstrad version, which is typical of someone's first game and wanting to impress and do as much as possible. Very, very good. Oh, here's the tank at the end of level two. Um, and as it turned out, the, de uh, the development of New York Warriors ended up being uh, nearly a year long for reasons we'll discuss in a bit, but plenty of time to fill around and add new bits in, I guess. And uh, Fred had just graduated and was struggling to find a proper uh, electronic engineering job until he saw an advert from Binary Design, which he says was a walkover to get, but on the downside it was embarrassingly low pays. Now with New York Warriors he wasn't really aware of the Arcadia system, rather that, oh this is another arcade conversion similar to the other stuff binary design were doing like Shinobi and Double Dragon at the time. Hello Richard Applin! <laughs> and just like those games a lot of the stuff was directly ported over from the 16-bit Big Brother. So yes Fred confirms that the Amiga graphics were indeed converted over to the CPC. After the original graphics in D-Paint on the Amiga had their horizontal resolution halved and forced down to a 16 color palette. Not being a graphics guy as such, there was little artistic retouching, which is why at times maybe the graphics look a little messy. Uh, but we're already familiar with that in other binary design, sorry, binary design conversions like Richard Applin's Shinobi and Double Dragon, which suffered from the same slightly messy graphics because they've been sort of like just quickly ported over from the Amiga. But they do, in my opinion, they actually look quite nice. A little bit garish at times, a little bit messy, but. I think they look really, really nice. Uh, talking of binary design, um, they also went bust during the making of New York Warriors, not just Mastertronic struggling, uh, but even uh, before then Fred had been shifted over to work on CPC specific things for hard driving, hence the really long development time of this game. But having all this work done, Fred was able to show this off to Big Red Software, which impressed them enough to get a job there and they allowed him to uh, finish the game, which uh, Virgin eventually released for them. Uh, Virgin, of course, by this point owned half of Mastertronic anyway. And of course, staying on at uh, Big Red Software meant that Fred got to make the next Dizzy game in Magicland Dizzy. And Fred has since made a great career in the games industry, working for many years alongside the Oliver Twins, and his most recent mainstream game, 
uh, was Typing of the Dead Overkill for the PC and is now currently working on free to play mobile games like Angry Birds Transformers, Strictly Come Dancing, believe it or not, and others. Uh, but it is lovely to see that Amsha coders still working in the industry today. What I find interesting is that Fred never had to use an Amstrad before this project. He tells me his own computers followed this progression, starting on a ZX81 to a BBC Micro, then an Acorn A3000, and then an Acorn Risk uh, PC. So Fred has no special affiliation to either the CPC, Specky, or the Commodore 64. But if he had to choose, unfortunately, it would be the Specky. Um, although he does like the uh, Amstrad CPC's colour palette, but laments the lack of oomph to get good frame rates. Now, the only other person working on New the New York Warriors project was Steve Barrett, doing the music you hear here. You may remember him f uh, for the excellent tune on Double Dragon 1 and 2, using the same music driver written for him and used here on New York Warriors. Uh, by Coda and our old friend Richard Applin. There we go. And there are some like little hidden areas in this level. Like you can go back down here, go up the ladder, and go on the rooftops. Not many people have spotted that, but there is a hidden weapon up here. But yes, let's talk about the game a little bit more. Um, again, I've already confirmed. I think the graphics are really, really nice here. They they're slightly on the messy side. But they're really, really colourful, and I think they look gorgeous. I think Fred's done a really good job of uh, converting the Amiga graphics over. Um, possibly better than, like, Shinobi and Double Dragon did. Uh, the music here is fantastic. It's the same tune throughout, but it's a really, really, really good tune. And again, by the same guy who did the Double Dragon and Shinobi tune. <laughs> um... I do like the gameplay. I do really like run and gun games. So when I find one on the Amstrad that's like halfway decent, I get very excited. So maybe I'm slightly biased and coloured here. This isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea. I mean, the enemy AI is pretty much non-existent. But then again, it was on the Amiga version. So for a conversion job, this is near on pretty much perfect for the Amstrad. And I can't really fault it. I mean, it, any gameplay defects kind of existed in the original game anyway. Um, I think it's got really smooth sprite movement, really smooth scrolling. Um, it's not kind of like 50 frames per second scrolling and whatever sprite movement that you might expect maybe on a Commodore 64 hardware scrolling, but I think this is really decent nonetheless. And I really, really enjoy this. And we're currently on level 3 here guys, and I was going to say as well that I actually find this level to be probably the hardest, if not one of the hardest levels in the game. The next few levels are not that tough, actually, compared to this one, uh, until we get to the World Trade Center levels at the end. Now, other versions of the game, you saw the Amiga version earlier, it wasn't particularly well received by the press. Um, it's identical to the um, Arcadia version we had footage of at the start of the video, uh, but obviously played at a more sensible frame rate, not emulation issues as we saw on the video earlier. Um, and yeah, it wasn't particularly great for a 16-bit game, but this is really good for 8-bit. Um, apparently this is on the uh, PC DOS. I've not seen this running, unfortunately, to talk about it, but it's a fairly rare and little heard of uh, game if you're a PC DOS fan. Uh, this game was also arrived on the ZX Spectrum. Fred also handled that. Uh, plays pretty much identically to the Amstrad version, but with like kind of two color graphics and looks pretty awful for it, if I'm honest. So definitely the Amstrad is the winner out of the Amstrad and the Specky. But it didn't arrive on the Commodore 64, sadly. Fred was the main uh, lead on uh, converting it to the 8 bit. He was only going to handle only going to handle the Amstrad and Specky. It was it's unknown if anyone was working on a Commodore 64 version, but with binary design going bust, uh, maybe the coder didn't take his work with him, and Big Red Software weren't interested. Who knows? But that's why, pretty much, why the Commodore 64 version didn't exist. Fred had pretty much finished his game, 
maybe the Commodore 64 version hadn't been started or had been abandoned and the coder went on to other things. But there we go. That is the end of level three there. We get the cutscene here for level four. Uh, but oh dear, look what it says there. Wrong disc. What's going on here? We've just changed the side two of the disc, but it's not finding anything. Indeed, um, unfortunately, guys, bad news. Those wonderful people on the Amtrad scene who tirelessly worked to dump and preserve all the CPC software have found that all the discs they've come across are blank on side two. Even my own real copy of the game is blank too. No! So yeah, guys, uh, a mastering of duplication er error occurred at the time and there's no side two on any disc anyone's found. And so we've got a bit of a problem here finishing the long play, but don't worry, I've got a solution. However, anyway, I've been speaking to Fred about this and there's Fred. Hi, Fred. Uh, a photo of him back in the day. And there's good and bad news. The bad news is Fred doesn't remember at all a 128k disc version ever being released, let alone anything about duplication or mastering error, sadly. Boo. However, the good news is Fred has loads of free inch discs still, which might, and I might, and I stress might, have interesting data on them. And he's willing to work with someone reliable to get the data off them. Hurrah! So don't worry, guys. I am on the case with helping out Fred here. So leave it with me. Uh, so where does this leave our long play? Well, we're going to jump onto the 64K tape version here now and pick things up from where we left off thanks to a handy level skip poke and with thanks to Johnny Olson and Nish Campbell on the CPC wiki forums as you can see here I'm able to poke in the score I had too in the game and um and this is where we'll take things from unfortunately we're going to be missing the uh, cutscenes from now on and the music in game because the 64K version didn't have music um, but we're going to add this in manually now on the edit so we can experience the game as it was meant to be on the 128k version but minus the cutscenes between the levels but don't worry we do have the ending sequence on the uh, tape version and by the way the tape version was a complete nightmare on multi-load especially with some of the short levels like level one but there you go but otherwise the game is pretty much intact as itself you can see there's like little animation still in the game area the animated guns there I think we get to, I don't know if we get the animated trees on this level is that animated I can't actually really tell with it moving uh, but there's those, those sort of orange lamp posts that were smoking away Oh look, there's some smoke coming out of the ground there. So we do get all that the little extra touches still in the game. Fred managed to get it in there. So well done, Fred. Um, but yeah, I've had to add the music in manually here. And unfortunately, we're going to be missing the cutscenes, which is a real shame. I've just backtracked there for the weapon. And I think from now on it should be pretty much triple shot weapons all the way through the game, which are which are the best weapons. There was the grenade launch you might have saw earlier, um, which seems to be rather pathetic. It doesn't really do much. In the arcade version, it does sort of like a large area of splash damage, which takes out a lot of enemies. That doesn't happen in the Amstrad version. So that's one negative thing in terms of how accurate the conversion is but it's a really, really minor thing, and you only get to find that weapon maybe once or twice in the game anyway, so we can overlook that. Yes, and I think we're getting towards the end of this level, so some of these levels are quite short. Hmm. Yeah, okay, um, let's talk about magazine reviews because I often like to talk about that. Weirdly, I can't find uh, any review of the game in uh, Amstrad Action. I've been through all the issues um, from, uh, pretty much all the issues through 1990, 1991 and I can't find a single review of this game. Which probably shows that maybe Virgin Mastertronic didn't really push the game as much as they perhaps should have done. 
and um, a lot of people probably don't know about New York Warriors to be fair um, but I do I own the game and I really like it um, there was also no review in Amsha Computer User according to my good friend of the, of the uh, channel Patrick Furlong thank you Patrick for checking that but it was reviewed in French Amsterdam magazines in around November of 1990. So it's probably got a, a, a release on the Amsterdam around between, somewhere between October and December of 1990. And there you go, that's pretty much all the factoids I've got to give of the game there. I just want to give a, another big shout out and thank you to Fred R. Williams. Fred, thank you very, very much for your uh, information and input. I, I found it very, very interesting. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day and schedule to uh, talk to me over email. It's really, really kind of him. I love when old coders from the 80s and stuff are happy to talk about their games. But um, I, I have to be honest, Fred says that um, he, I don't think he's particularly proud of this game. <laughs> I think he should be. Um, he seemed a bit sort of uh, down about it and stuff, but um, but he says, yeah, not really proud of this one, uh, mostly because of the zero artist involvement and the tape multi-load. I think the tape multi-load would have been a bit of a problem, because you only get three lives in the game. Um, I don't believe you earn any lives for hitting a certain score, or there's no bonus life pickups in the game. And there's no continues either, so three lives, and that's your lot. And it is a tough game, especially when you get lots of enemies on screen. So it may not always be best to be rushing through the game, but it maybe could rush a little bit with a three-way shot weapon, which I'm gonna pick up there now. With the New York subways, just to give that even more of a the Warriors feel. <laughs> And now we've got a triple shot just testing that and um, you can sort of spray away and clear the area ahead of you um, because the enemies don't start shooting until you've actually scrolled onto where they are and if you're shooting and moving forward at the same time you can get a cheeky shot in like that ahead of you and yes we've now got evil clowns in the subway <laughs> like sort of demented Ronald McDonald's Ugh. Why on earth do McDonald's ever think Ronald McDonald would be a good mascot for them? Don't they know people don't like clowns? Oh, this section! Right! This bit here is almost impossible to pass and I found a little glitch to get past this guy because you cannot get between his bullets once you uh, get to this bit but there's actually a little glitch here where you can go into like the wall here and push left and then push right and fire very quickly in between the <laughs> uh, hail of bullets if you can time it just right and you can get past this guy with a little sort of exploiting glitch but it's there in the game I've not used any cheats or pokes and we've done it so that took a lot of working out so if you're playing this game yourself you may want to take a snapshot before that bit if you're playing on an emulator God help you if you're playing this on a real tape or disc um, otherwise I think you would have had to lose a life there and just be temporary and vulnerable afterwards and run through so a bit of play testing fail there. Those things on the floor that I don't quite know what they are. I think they're holes into it, holes in the floor to the subway below, and and they will instantly kill you. And here's the uh, generator at the end of the level, and we've finally done it. So that wasn't the toughest level, apart from that that dickhead <laughs> that was like shooting a hail of bullets at you, and he does not stop. He will continue that hail of bullets. So. Unless you dispatch of him quickly or find a glitch like I did, then uh, you've got no chance. So a bit of a playtesting fail there, but I'll, I'll let Fred off. I'll let him off. But again, shout out to Fred again. Thank you very, very much, mate. Thank you, Fred, for taking the time to talk to me. Maybe I will do a separate video one day on the Arcadia system and do a bit more research on it. Because I find that absolutely fascinating. An Amiga inside an arcade cabinet. Limey. <laughs> I should have put an Amsterdam inside an arcade cabinet. <laughs> I would have used it. Not many other people would have though. <laughs> okay. Alright. Um, so we're back on, I think, another bridge level. And there's now abandoned cars here that you can actually shoot and blow up. As you can see there, as, I, as my bullets hit it, it changes colours and flashes. 
but with the triple shot weapon just do like a slow spray ahead of you and you can actually push through the game fairly quickly but it often pays to be very very cautious and take your time and uh, yeah so there's actually a gun under that car so we're going to blow the car up and refill our weapon now, and now there's a burnt out shell of a car. Look at that water spraying from the hydrant there. I'm sure we had rats scurrying across again. Uh, actually, I just <laughs> this is actually a dead end and we need to go a different way. I haven't quite realised it yet. <laughs> Oops. What's that on the floor there? I'm just walking over. That's animated as well, like a red thing. I don't know what quite what that was. We've got a bar animated bar sign there flashing. Another nice touch. Neon signs as well. And this all adds to the appeal and the atmosphere of the game. So I'm really glad Fred managed to get this in the game. And I really, really appreciate that. I know I've talked about this earlier, but I can't stress this enough. I love games that have, you know, have um, all these little extra little touches and animations and cutscenes, and especially games that have like endings and stuff like that. And yes, New York Warriors does have an ending, so it's well worth watching to the end. And it has a really impressive game over screen as well, and I will show you that at the end of the video as a little bit of extra footage. So, um, whilst this level is pretty sedate compared to the uh, final levels we're coming up to shortly, um, I'm going to sum up a bit of a review here. Um, fantastic graphics, a little bit messy at times, and perhaps a bit garish maybe. I don't know, this level looks particularly good. Um, the, the bright green grass, the park we saw earlier, not so much, but otherwise, really, really good graphics. I like the graphics here, and um, I like the, I really like the music. The music is a, uh, the song is fantastic, even if it is repeated through the game, but it's good enough to do. Um, sound effects are really, really meaty and good as well. Um, nice little jingle there. And I love the cutscenes and all the extra touches and stuff like that as I keep banging on about. Um, I really enjoy the gameplay. Uh, it's not perhaps not as good as say like Ikari Warriors which is a similar top down vertically scrolling sort of shoot 'em up. This is a more of a smaller plane area, smaller levels, more of a tactical, um, more thought goes into like where you're moving to and stuff like that perhaps. Because there's only a set few bad guys on the level as well. It's a bit more tactical, so a more slower paced Ikari Warriors maybe. And I like that. The only thing that sort of get, uh, gets me sometimes is that if you push down on the joystick, you don't uh, turn uh, and look downwards. You can't see that I've got guys behind me here and I can't shoot them. In fact, when you go diagonally down, it actually sort of faces the opposite um, direction facing diagonally so um, that's actually quite useful sometimes for dispatching uh, enemies but um, it's a bit of a problem like on, especially on this level when you get a lot of enemies that have spawned behind you um, now that doesn't happen on the uh, Amiga original oh, thank god for the triple shot weapon there you, you do, your character does actually look downwards, so I don't know why that was changed on the Amstrad version by Fred. Uh, maybe he ran out of space for uh, sprites or something. But I'm sure the sprite could have been flipped or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. So that's maybe a minor negative. Otherwise, I think this is a really, really fantastic product. I really enjoy it. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone likes kind of like shoot 'em ups like this. Um, I will mark it down for the enemy AI being particularly stupid. <laughs> but then again, you know, most games of this era had pretty stupid enemy AI anyway. Uh, what can we expect, you know? Fred has managed to fit this into 64k of memory as well, by the way, guys. But yes, the multi-load on tape would have been a bit of a nightmare. But hey, you know, most games of this era in 89, 90, 90 and so forth, all were pretty much multi-load games, especially for the full price range. So, you know, that's what you kind of had to live with. I've I've had worse multi-loads, but it is very, very tough with only three lives, and that's your lot. And actually, that's the exit above me there, and I didn't realise. Uh, I thought I had still more of the game to go of this level, uh, and I thought I better get rid of this guy behind me. But anyway, that was stupid of me, stupid Zypho. But overall, guys, I really like this. Uh, I, I, God knows what Amsterdam Action would have given this at the time if they had a review copy, but um, 
I, I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10, guys, is my review score. I really do. Uh, it's almost nudging towards a 90% range, but I kind of acknowledge that I may be sort of swayed a little bit by shiny things, you know, cutscenes between levels and animated bits and bobs and ending screens and stuff where, hang on, is the gameplay, core gameplay actually good and is it fun? Well, you know, I enjoyed it. Not everyone's going to enjoy it, but it's my review. But I do take into account that it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, which is why I'm not going to give this like a 9 out of 10. Um, there are defects to the game and it is quite a small plane area as well, sadly. But there you go. I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. And we are now in the World Trade Center. <laughs> and uh, those globe things there, you can actually destroy them in the uh, Arcadia Amiga version, but sadly not on the Amstrad version. And I believe if you touch them, um, you die. So don't touch them. Now there's a few of these mad guys there spraying bullets behind crates now, not sandbags. And yeah, just attack them off the screen but they're, they're going to be some really tough ones to defeat later in the level. Oh yes, and also we get lifts in this game, in, in this level now. And um, from this level onwards, take the wrong lift and you end up on the wrong floor. So this becomes a little bit of a, I wouldn't say a maze, uh, but basically there's two lifts at the end of the next few sections. And all you need to remember is take the right hand lift every time to reach the level where the nuclear bomb is. You can actually go back down the level and redo it again. Now watch out for those security cameras, nicely animated by the way. You can actually destroy them if you get close enough to them, but I wouldn't recommend trying. Those security cameras actually fire bullets at you. I will say that perhaps one negative would be that it would have been very, very useful to have the enemy's bullets a different color to your own, because they can get quite confusing and there could be a massive hail of bullets on the screen sometimes, completely filling the screen with like bullet hell, and having different colour bullets would have really, really helped matters, but um, that's another minor criticism. Um, some people might complain about the, the speed of the game being a little bit slow, but I think this, this is actually at the right pace for the gameplay. Maybe Fred might have hoped to have the game running a bit faster, but actually, the, the pace is just right. Uh, it matches the gameplay pace, which you have to be a little bit tactical on. But yeah, the frame rate perhaps isn't the best, but it's managed to get really smooth scrolling. Uh, this is amazing that this is Fred's first game on the Amstrad, and he's got decent scrolling, decent sprite movement, all these extra bits and pretty much all in 64k of memory as well. Amazing stuff really. And I'll stop banging on about it. Anyway, let's just talk about what's happening. <laughs> okay, I think we're actually near the end of this level here. Yeah. And remember guys, take the right hand lift. Watch out, there might be a camera above the lift that might be about to shoot you. Yes, there is one. But we got in the lift pretty quickly there. I think this might be the penultimate section of the World Trade Center level. So we're getting close to the end now, guys. In fact, guys, I find this more enjoyable than the Amiga version and the Arcadia version. Way more enjoyable. take them out over from a distance there. Can we hit this guy here? Yeah we can. And we're just going to try and take out as many of the bad guys as we can. Um, and I think on this section here taking the left hand route is preferable. There was another guy there we had to take out. I'm just having a quick check around. Oh yes, go up the central route here and you can take out one of these mad gunners. There's, I think there's about three of them here, which is going to cause a real big problem. Yeah, there's three of them, I think. Yes. So now we're going to backtrack, and there's no, and uh, it's, it's wise to backtrack at times, guys, and be a little bit more tactical here. So this is when we're going to go around to the left here. And go after the second mad gunner of three. 
keep an eye out for the cameras there shooting bullets at you. Thankfully bullets move at quite a slow speed actually. I think, ooh, oof, oof, just did it there. And I think we're going to do this guys about losing our life. This was very very tough to do. And there's one more mad gunner here which is really difficult to hit. So you have to find the right position on the corner of these boxes there and you can hit him. And I got him. That's actually had to be absolutely pixel perfect to actually get that right spot there. Again, that took a lot of experimenting with. You're going to have to take my word for it and trust me on that, guys. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Very tough game on this level. Coming up to the final lifts here. Yes! And we're coming on to the. I think this will be the final uh, level or section of this. Uh, of the uh, World Trade Center level. And there we go. Always take the right hand lift. Enemies spawn right at you at the start, so be very, very quick. They also take two bullets to kill on uh, this World Trade Center level, actually, as well. Forgot to mention. And also, a big shout out to the actual box, uh, physical box for this game. It's actually a really unusual size. A big, huge, chunky plastic thing. Like, almost like a VHS box, but um, more uh, square in shape. Very unusual size box. It doesn't, that size, I, I don't think I've got another game. And I've got a right mixture of games in different box sizes. I don't think I've got another game that is exactly that same box size. That's what Virgin were doing on their full price games of the 8 bits. Nice box. Anyway, uh, another mad, <laughs> mad git here. Just trying to get the right, perfect angle to hit him there. So I've moved off this screen there. Don't move into that flashing globe thing, that will kill you. Didn't quite hit him there, so we're going to have to be very careful <laughs> and backtrack. I'm going to try a front-on assault here. Can I get around this table? I can. Yep, that's taking him out. There you go. It takes quite a few hits to kill. And nice. Now we've got triple... Ooh, triple shot weapon. Nearly got hit by that camera there. Can we get by it? I'm going to take it out. And we have just... And I think this is where the nuclear bomb is, guys. So this is the end of the level and the end of New, uh, New York Warriors. And all we need to do is just destroy the timer mechanism for the bomb. And it's just to the left there, which is actually quite hard to reach. You have to shoot it from um, outside of this sort of boxed area. Ah, no, no. Ooh, just survived. That was close. It's just below us there. Unfortunately, we can't shoot behind us, <laughs> unfortunately. And, and rather annoyingly, we've got a guy stood in the way there. And eventually he moves. So the uh, later guys, apart from the Ramboids on the first level, they, they will eventually like move um, upwards and move around a bit more. Rather just stay rooted to the spot, same spot forever, shooting away. That <laughs> continues volume, volley, volley of bullets. Anyway, and talking of volley of bullets, that all we're going to do here is just stand here and shoot this mechanism here to disable the nuclear bomb, which actually takes a lot of hits, but eventually we'll get there. We took out the camera that was shooting us, and there we go! And that is New York Warriors beaten, and here's the ending. Hurrah! New York is safe! And we escape in our helicopter from the top of the World Trade Center there. And there we go. That's a nice little ending there. Simple one, but, you know, decent nonetheless. And we can put our name in the high score table. And before we finish, guys, I'm going to show you the game over screen, which is actually even more impressive than the ending. And, um,. Yeah, so that's an 8.5 out of 10 for me, final review score. I really enjoy this. Anyway, here's the uh, ending, as I just get myself killed randomly there. And what will happen? Let's see and find out. Oh no! <laughs> A nuclear bomb has gone off. The Statue of Liberty has lost its head. A bit Planet of the Apes, really, there. 
and unfortunately New York is wiped out as is most of humanity. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. That was New York Warriors and a big thank you to David Hayes Haywood and Fred as well. Cheers guys. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, if you did please click a like below, leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already, and over that way there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.